All right, guys, please comment below if you can hear me okay. Very important topic today. I'm changing format a little bit. Came to my studio. Actually, Jeremy, can you shut the door for me, please? Here with my videographer. But it's very, very important topic. Recently, I have been discussing from with many, many people um, <clears throat> who came to me and complained that they cannot find workers, uh, that uh, there's a labor issue. And I'm going to tell you in this video a few things which you need to know about your uh, not only weight. Uh, we're not going to only discuss obesity as a problem. We're going to discuss fatness as a business owner. We're going to discuss your culture and what kind of message you as a business owner, your image, how you handle yourself, how it affects your business. Super, super important. I have a couple points here. But first, guys, uh, like this video if you like this content. I'm going to go once a week um, at night. Just a little bit easier for me. Mornings are hectic. I understand you guys want to put some work done. And when I call out someone, when I want to really discuss and meditate on important topic, it'll be a um, late night show, if you will, by Roofing Insights. First thing first, I want to make a couple really quick announcements. Roofing Process Conference tickets are on sale. If you're common, we already have about 500 tickets sold. If you have purchased the tickets or you're planning to come, please go to roofconference.com. You will find the link to Rosen Plot, uh, Center Hotel. Please book it. Hotel just emailed me a couple days ago. We have four, we expect about 1,500 people this year. Show floor export is about 70% booked, but uh, we want to make sure that hotel is booking. We have like a room block. It's a special rate. I believe, I don't want to misquote, I believe it's like 159 or 139, something like mid uh, 200, like mid 100s, whatever, 150. I want to make sure you get good room. I highly recommend you stay at the Rosen uh, Center Hotel during the Roofing Process Conference. It's December 9 and 10. We have Kevin Harrington coming in. A lot of people from this channel that you guys have seen best of the best, like Monarch Roofing, Eustace Roofing, all these business owners, Apple Roofing, Dustin Bigler, uh, <clears throat> Martin Pedigree, all these mega CEOs, you can learn from them. And I promise you, you will not be disappointed. We will take care of you. But please book the room with the Rosen Hotel. If you don't have tickets yet, it's early bird discount. I think the price will go up at the end of August. So make sure you book your tickets. Don't be confused with any other conference. It's the only Roofing Insights convention that we have. We call it Roofing Process Conference. It's our biggest event of the year. We're about to announce three more speakers they are bigger and bigger. I promise you, you're going to like them. But let's dive in into this topic today. And here's why I want to talk about it. I'm tired of this kind of clash between workers and the business owners. And I'm going to share my feedback. Like I was on the crew. I work in a cabinet shop. I work on a uh, siding vinyl crew. Like we install a lot of vinyl. I remember those days in the working day. You know, you work with your bodies, with your crew, and then boss shows up. Big lifted truck, little belly. You can tell that that guy has not worked for years. Uh, probably will not be able to <laughs> pick up a big box of tile or floors or whatever the case is. And I remember guys joking about it. Oh, boss is here, like mocking him. I don't care where you're from. I don't care if you're Brazilian, Russian, Mexican. It's a common thing. I actually experienced it myself when I would show up at the job and I hear, you know, guys, you know, I start picking up Spanish and I hear them mocking me. But here's the thing. We are to blame for this problem. The message that you sent to your team, to your business as a business owner really matters. What do you think your people you employ your hardworking guys on the field, on the roof, are going to think about you or thinking about you when you publish your, you know, Cancun trip, when you buy yet another fancy vehicle, when you are um, going, you know, when you like to drink and you publish pictures of $500 tabs at the restaurants. You can afford it. You live this high life. You haven't been in the gym for months. You're very, very comfortable. What's happening? What's happening to your image, to your culture. You're distancing yourself from your team. And that's why I see so much hate between installers and salespeople. You know why? Because salespeople are flexing too much. That boss, when you show up, you know, in a vehicle that has six 
miles per gallon gas mileage. That tells your crew that you don't care for money. You, you will waste a dollar just like that, especially when you're negotiating with them for cheaper prices. When they ask you for 85 and you're like, no, do for 80. Let me tell you the story. In the first year in business, all right, so no, push, it, push it back. Push it back. What's going on? Uh, it's kind of just peaking. Uh, peaking? Guys, can you hear me okay? If you hear me okay, let me know. So I, I'm going to share a story with you. In the first year in business, I was um, paying myself about 60000 a year. Later on, I found out that my crew leader, what's going on? Hold on. Guys, can you hear me okay? Uh, I want to make sure my videographer is telling me something going on with the sound. With, with the sound. It's kind of like as if it's like too loud and it's like peaking. I don't know why. Um, I don't think you've been this close to the mic before. Um, you're standing. Um, can you guys tell me if, to, okay, too loud. How about now? Can you hear me okay now? I'm going to go on this rent for a while, so I want to make sure that you uh, a bit distorted. How about this now? Audio is good now. Little echo, but it's fine. Is it better now? Do you feel like it's better? It's just different setup, so I might be a little bit too close to the microphone. Audio is fine. Okay, I'm, I continue. So in the first year in business, I paid myself 60000 a year, and I was very, very uh, uh, transparent about it with my employees. My lead guy, my crew leader, also uh, got paid that year about 60000 Later, I asked him, you know, how much money did you make last year? He said sixty k, and I actually gave him salary. He worked for me for five years on that. Uh, for 60000 a year plus bonuses, whatever. On the third year in business, I hired production manager, production manager, and I pay, gave him 100000 a year salary. I was paying myself $80,000 salary. Here's why I share the story. As a business owner, you work for your people. You don't work for yourself. But oftentimes, and I, I meet too many business owners who are in business for themselves. It's your comfort zone, it's your lifestyle, you take the risk and you think that you deserve all of it and you think that no one is here to tell you what kind of car to drive. We have this mentality that I absolutely hate when man comes home and tells his wife, well, I work hard, I, I deserve it. You know how many times I met a business owner who purchased something super expensive and he told his employees, his wife, his brother, his sister, like, I deserve it. You know, I bought my first Mercedes Benz, I believe in fourth year in business. And I remember the first comment that I got like that week, not because of me, not big, nothing that I did. I didn't put big down payment, didn't take a lot of money from the business. But I remember my accountant told me that there was rumors in my company that, you know, I paid myself a little bit too much. I, I paid myself, I, I purchased, I, it was loan, $60,000 vehicle, but it was Mercedes Benz. And I think my team was struggling uh, with the payroll that week because we have like a quarter million dollars in the receivables. And um, I think they were making arrangements, whatever. So it was wrong message. So the point is this, when you live lavish lifestyle and you have any kind of issues with a sob, not paying people on time, maybe you're behind your ABC supply bill or you cannot pay in full. First thing those people are gonna look at you know, your Instagram post. If you drop in $500 in bills and you uh, eating steaks in the most expensive state houses on a daily basis, guess what? It will kill your culture. It will kill your company from inside out. I remember I used to work for a guy and I want to share this example. Great, great lesson. So this guy runs $12 million company. I'm kind of his sub, kind of like working on their projects. And I remember you know, we started talking on a regular basis and uh, we were working on a couple, I think I took like four or five houses. It was um, my flooring account when I was, uh, it was the only account, the only company that was giving me jobs. I still was bidding uh, on them, but there was only wholesale account, if you will. Uh, there was not typical homeowners. And I was doing four or five projects, very custom projects because nobody else would do them. And I remember I wanted to discuss it with them and the guy was not available. So from Thursday to Tuesday, we texted, whatever. So on Tuesday, we met. And I said, well, I was trying to reach you on Friday or something like that. And he said, yeah, I, I had to, you know, I have to plug away, uh, you know, like I was stressed. I went to Cancun with my wife, but please don't tell anyone on my team. 
this guy took Cancun trip. If you follow him, he does it pretty often. He would go to Europe, he would go to Cancun. No social media post, nobody would know, nobody, you know, like nobody would have any idea. He deserves every bit of it. Nobody would question. I would never question. As a matter of fact, the moment he, he told me that he earned so much of my respect. The thing is, when you live a modest life, when you keep things like that in secret, when you the guy lives in a $1.2 million home, he pays people really well. He drives, I don't know, $150,000 car, but he's not flexing it. So I want you to think for a moment what kind of message contractor sends to his roofers when you show up in a $100,000 truck, when you have a belly like this, when people do not believe that you can actually do work yourself, even if you have to do the work, they understand that you're in a different position, but they will mock you, they will not take you seriously, and most likely they will work for you just because they have to. Just because they have to, because maybe you're the only one who has the jobs at the, at the moment. So think about your leadership, think about your style, think about your message. We do have this problem because we have too many salespeople who are way more, way comfortable in life. They started as roofing businesses, but they have no respect from actual roofers. I remember how many times I arrive at a job and if there's a pallet and we have to unload it, I would start loading on my shoulder two at a time. I started taking it. I wanted my team to see me working. I recently visited Eustace Roofing, Monarch Roofing, and uh, EIS roofing, like those guys, I mean, amount of respect their teams have for them. I remember used to roofing, uh, Jason told me, the owner, he said sometimes they will go with the sales guys and they'll actually will work three, four hours a day just to earn respect from the crew. What's the last time you worked with your team? In Arkansas, Connor John Johns recently told me a couple months ago that he spent half a day on the roof. Here's, but here's the wake up call to so many of you. If you think that your health is your personal problem, it doesn't affect anybody around you. Listen, you're the leader. You're sending message to your team. Uh, you're giving people 50 year warranty and looking at some of you, I don't know if you're gonna make another two seasons before you have a heart attack. When you start your day with three energy drinks and five donuts, I don't, like you're a bullshitter to me. I don't think you can do the work. I don't think you will last long. I don't think you're here for long term. I think you're too comfortable and you're playing a short game. So guys, take your um, health to the next level before it's too late. If you want your workers, to, if you want to attract workers, if you want them to respect you, you have to respect yourself. I have never seen a person who became fit who would regret it. You know, lose 20 pounds, oh shit, I wish I didn't do it. Never. Usually goes other way around. Here's another thought for you. Uh, in roofing businesses, often I see this fancy war rooms. I never have war room in my business, but I see guys doing it all the time. You have this war room. What war room means? Like means you in war with someone. When, when I look at you and ask yourself this question, would your employees go to war with you in your physical condition? Look at firefighters, police officers, and stuff like that. Would you be willing to go on a duty with someone who has extra 100 pounds on him, who does not respect his health? And by the way, it doesn't have to be obesity. It could be other way around. I've seen too many tradesmen who s neglected their health for years. Never, like They're so skinny, and they have a problem with the joints because they've been on a Red Bull or Monster diet and guest stage diet for the last 30 years, by the age of 50, they can't move, they can't bend. You definitely don't wanna go with war with those people. I mean, we're not saying that they're not hardworking people, but I'm saying that those people are not taking care of their bodies. They don't respect themselves and nobody around them will respect themselves. You know what else I see? I see that us as a man, you know, we like beautiful women, we want to have uh, good employees. We tell people we want to hard workers, but we don't do what's hard. Yeah, going to the gym is hard. Guess what? You're an entrepreneur. You are the business owner. You're supposed to do what's hard. So you're telling me you're working hard, but you're not going to do the hard work. You know that you need to lose 20 pounds 
and you're not going to do it. You're not going to do it for your family, for your girl, for your employee. So why would I work for you if you are not doing that hard thing? By the way, it's it's very trendy now. If you look at the top CEOs, like in business in general, there's so many people are fit. Like I promise you this, most employees would rather follow a fit person, person who figured out his life, his fitness, his goals, he is driven, he is motivated. Uh, one of the things we were doing at Storm Group when I was running my company is we were paying a lifetime membership. One of the coolest thing that ever happened to us. I remember going to the gym five, six o'clock in the morning with my managers. The best things, playing basketball, doing bench presses. You know, a couple of my sales guys were really fit. Those are the best moments. I felt like a leader going to the gym with them. As a matter of fact, if you ever follow me, conference, or if I come to your gym, we're gonna work out together, different energy. You know why? Because you better in yourself. You becoming better as a person, people will wanna follow you. Who wants to work for someone lazy and someone, if you gave up on yourself, you trying to convince me that you did not give up on your business? When, when unfit person, Someone who I'm not talking about, you know, we all have different genes. Like my genes, like I have a skinny legs. You might be a little bit chubby. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about being unfit and being fat by choice. When you wake up in the morning and you have to have five donuts and sugary drink and three monsters after that, that's your choice. So if that's, that's your lifestyle, you're sending me a message that you gave up. You give up how you look. You don't care if you're going to make it another 10 years. You know probably that everything you're doing is bad, but you're not doing anything about it. But you want me to follow you. So when a person like that comes to me and says, Dimitri, you know what? I can't find employees anymore. Really? I don't want to work for you. I've been in those interviews. I remember I worked for a builder. I mean, he was he was one of those, you know, you, you've seen the show when person cannot get off the bat. I mean, that guy would not see his balls, you know, if he doesn't have a mirror. Like, I'm talking about big. Listen, if I would go for an interview for the person like that, I mean, that person will never get, go on the roof. He will never go on the ladder. I mean, he would be like this. Okay. What, what? Do you want to work for a person like that? He made choices. That's his life. That's his lifestyle. And it's okay for him. But I promise you this. People need to motivate themselves today. They want to go to a place to work for people who will lead them. Make a business decision about your fitness. So many of you will not think about um, fitness unless we put a dollar sign next to it. What if I tell you that you can make, as an entrepreneur, extra 100000 a year by staying fit? Here's how it works. Let me explain. You start becoming fit. First of all, it's a, it's you're gonna attract way more talent. You're gonna attract people. You're gonna build your confidence. Overall, you literally can put a dollar amount, the uh, dollar sign on sales on whatever on your fitness because you will be better leader. You know that's right away like gonna increase something. You might. I remember um, I recruited Adam. Dyson today he's running his own business he's in directory great guy I remember conversations we have Adam was a hockey player he knew that he neglected himself for years I remember the conversations we had 5 6 30 in the morning at Menards he was a Menards guy who was selling me shingles in the morning and first I recruited him and he joined my CrossFit gym before he joined my company he joined my CrossFit gym and I remember a conversation he's like why are you so driven? Why are you so motivated? How do you stay fit? You have kids. I have five kids. I have few businesses and I have time for it. And people want to know why. When you figure it out, your regime, your daily uh, activity, when you figure out life, you, when you figure out how to stay proactive and how to stay disciplined and on schedule at all times, people want to follow that. Another thing is, your employees don't work for you. You work for them. Never forget it. Um, fat person, if you will, or person who kind of give up on himself, he's sending different message. But also people don't believe that he can do the work. You know what happens when people don't believe that you can do the work? 
not it's it creates bad culture in most businesses it will you never want you you always want to be the person who works the most i want my employees i want my videographers to know when they're asleep i'm still working when they wake up i already did something for them i i want to be the hardest worker in my company and it's very hard to accomplish when you give up on yourself and when your lifestyle does not show that so be very careful what kind of message you're sending to the world about your lifestyle what you eat what you drink how much you pay yourself we have sales guys who's dropping checks how much they make uh, on a daily basis now and what's happening with the internet in general we started um, being separated we start creating this groups of people where roofers think um, that sales guys making too much it's not always the case sales guys deserve to get paid a little bit more you know why because they take more risk but what's happening is when sales guy comes in and says he did ten thousand dollars in one week first of all he did not have to share it with the world because it's extraordinary result it's not good message for your homeowners it's not good i mean in in general it's not good message be a little bit humble steve jobs when he was trying to get um uh funding you know he was driving porsche when one of his guys they have to park on the back so people don't see it so they don't think they have they make more too much money smart people hide their money i love jay-z story jay-z early in his career jay-z put everything on him gold chains everything it was like all right here now <laughs> jay-z worth gazillions of dollars what does he wear freaking black t-shirt simple jeans you don't see flexing anymore when you made it in life you don't flip you don't need to flex anymore if you made 10 grand a week keep it to yourself be humble next day wake up in the morning go buy breakfast to your roofing crew because without them you would not be wrecking the ten thousand dollar check i mean i i'm not hating on sales guys or business owners eat at fancy restaurants i love it too i love myself good um you know good trip somewhere but don't post everything. Don't flex. Don't be fat in public image. Nobody works. Nobody wants to work for that guy. Recently, one of the guys told me that he is quitting a company, a really good company. And ask him why. He said, I don't want to build this guy's business. You don't say that about good leaders. You don't say it about someone who works. You know, if you work 50 hours for the business and the owner works 80 hours for the business, you know he deserves everything he has like if you follow guys like gary v i mean guys like gary they, they deserve everything what's the last time you've seen gary v flexing you know what's the last time you've seen him flexing about i mean the, gary v makes 30 million dollars a year 30 million dollars he's gonna buy jets very time soon he's not flexing and look at the grand cardone everybody hates grand cardone everybody loves gary v i'm just saying i'm just saying Look how many exposed videos about Grant Cardone and that he's fake and jets and cars, everything. Some people will say it's good, it's bad, good publicity, bad publicity. I'm saying be a humble leader, lose weight because you're an entrepreneur, you're a leader. Don't lose it just for yourself. Lose it for your team, lose it for your wife, for your kids. I want you to be able to play soccer or football wherever your sport baseball with your kids when you're 50 or 60 are you going to be able to don't live in tomorrow I, I met too many people in this industry who are telling me that Dmitry you know like back in the day I was doing this and I was a bodybuilder I'm like okay that was then like I used to deadly 300 good for you for the first you know you were doing in 20s when I'm doing almost 40 what's the point you live in in the past or I also hear like okay I'm gonna rejoin the gym I'm I'm gonna hit 500 next year no don't dream about the future don't live in the past it's today if you don't have a gym membership it starts tomorrow by the way you don't need a trainer you don't need fitness coach you don't need nutrition coach you already know that you should not be eating crap stop eating crap go to YouTube you'll find all the information you possibly need you know cut out meat cut out sugar wherever it is that you will find out experiment try how you feel i quitted about five bad habits in the last 
six months. And I'm telling you one thing for sure. I can attest to it. This is testimony. I became a better leader. I feel better. I feel more confident. I have more energies. So what you're going to do if you have a few extra pounds, if you're struggling, join me on this journey. Uh, I actually trying to lose a couple pounds myself as we speak. And I also, you will only grow if your goals are grown. As a person, we only grow when our goals are grown. Do you have goals? Do you have fitness goals? What kind of goals you have? Because I firmly believe that leaders eat last. You have to feed your company first, your employees, people who work for you. That's first. You eat last. So many business owners in the roofing industry, they eat first. They want to make sure that they're fat, that you know, it's me, me, me. It's all about me. I'm the hardest worker guy. I deserve another truck. I deserve this. I deserve this vacation. I deserve this. No, you don't. You don't deserve anything. If your employees who you hired and promised them something, promised them pay a steady job, if they're not taken care of, you don't deserve anything. They come first. You are you you should eat last. Never forget that. Let's see who we have here in the room. Uh, I'm gonna bring a few of you in the screen. Randy, looks like you were first. Always good to see you. Alex Zuniga, I want to know if you did that friend. You promised me you're going to do friend. I did friend. If you don't know what friend is, it's actually a great, great uh, fitness test. It comes from CrossFit. If you consider yourself fit, here's what I want you to do. You do thruster. So you put uh, 25s, which is like 95-pound bar. You do thruster. You, you do the fr front squat. You squat. You get up. About it. That's one thruster. And you keep doing it. 21. 15, 9, 21 thrusters, uh, tw uh, 21 pull-ups, just regular pull-up. You can do keeping pull-up, assisted, whatever. Then 15, 15, 9, 9. So, so many CrossFitters, <laughs> if they have fit friends, bodybuilders, whatever, they bring them, okay, let's see what you do with a friend. Uh, at the highest level, guys do it at like two minutes. Three years ago, my time was seven minutes. Two years ago, it was five minutes. I just did it yesterday. It was three minutes and 50 seconds. So I literally, in three years, got, you know, my time almost cut in half. Fitter um, than ever. So Alex Zuniga was supposed to do it the same day. I want to know what he got. Ty Meredith says, I got to lose 25 pounds badly. Here's for weight loss. What you do is, uh, Brandon Siemens actually shared it recently with me. Um, apple cider vinegar before you go to bed. It helps with the sugar level. I mean, it's there's so many benefits to apple cider vinegar. Just a few tablespoons, cold water, drink it, go to bed. You will be losing weight daily. I would recommend good cardio. I would recommend intermittent fasting. One of the best things that ever happened to me was intermittent fasting. So you don't eat for eight hours, uh, for 16 hours, you eat for eight. So I usually don't have breakfast. I would eat from one to six, from one to eight, whatever during the day. Try not to eat three, four hours before you go to bed. Apple cider vinegar will not break your uh, fast. I usually drink coffee with no sugar. Will not break your fast. The rest is just exercise. I exercise fasted and uh, actually experimented with my body a lot. Uh, I deadlift 485 pounds. I squat like 385. I just did another personal record yesterday. Fasted six o'clock in the morning. I lift heavy weights while I'm fasted, and I feel better than ever. So I don't need meat, by the way, for the last three months too. So it works. Just find what works for you. Kevin says, good evening. Good evening, my friend. Um, Robert Carilla, health is super important. Yes, it is. And the thing is, it's I'm telling you, glad I'm a skinny son of a gun. Yes, you are, Dylan. Here's the thing, guys. The, one of the reasons I, uh, I chose this topic today, because I see the trend. I see few companies. All I see from them, it's four or five guys who I don't believe can roof if for their life, you know, you're talking about big bellies, you're talking about they flex and, and every day is like, oh, our favorite spot, our favorite restaurant. And I'm talking about business account. That's their roofing business. I would never want to be part of it. I'm sorry. I've never seen you work. I've never seen you unload a shingle. I've never seen you on the roof. I mean, come on, what's wrong with you? 
you're a roofing business owner. Your employees should believe that in case of emergency, you should be able to do it. You know how many comments I got that I have a baby hands and this hands never work? Listen, if I work head to head with you, there's no way you are working me. If you think you can outpace me, let's talk about that war room. Like, would you go to war with your boss? Would your employee take you to war if they have to? I want to be the person who you would pick to go to war with you. You know, if we would have to go in extreme conditions, I want to make sure that people would choose me. And I want you to be that boss. You're the leader. And there's so many leaders out there. The only place where your employees would take you is a fancy restaurant because you would pay for the tab. That's about it. They're not going to take you on the roof. They're not going to ask you to unload a pellet with them because they don't want to call ambulance for your heart attack. I'm sorry, guys. Some of you are, should be just staying in office and you have no respect. And by the way, those jokes, they will never stop. You know how many employees I have seen quit working for businesses because they have to, don't never forget, they have to be motivated. They have to have a reason to wake up in the morning, go to work and bust their ass for you. Maybe they're not doing it. Maybe they're lazy because they're tired. They don't want to build your dream. They don't want to build your lifestyle. They don't want to pay for your next state house because every day you're publishing. Every time you publish the tab or the Cancun trip, they feel like they're paying for it. Maybe they would have better motivation to go to work if you stop doing this crap and you actually start put, you know, putting different content like you came to the office and swept the floor in the morning that would be motivated post for the boss i'm just saying hmm this may be interesting uh i hope it's good uh loud and clear i'm down almost 15 pounds uh exercising every day and cutting back drinking charlie anderson i don't know where 15 pounds went to i have met you and you're one skinny son of a gun I don't. Th I think you should gain 15 pounds. Hopefully, muscles. I don't think you have the problem, but I salute you for losing 15 pounds. Good job, man. Um, Alex Henry says, "I own a roofing business in Northwest Arkansas. I lost 90 pounds from 295 to 205. Man, that's impressive in the last 12 months. Also, I just got done with my evening run. Absolutely amazing. I want to know, Alex, what motivated you? Why did you lose weight? What happened?" And here's the thing, guys. If you're the leader, like I said, you're an entrepreneur. Look at this as a business decision. When you're fit, when you make the decision for yourself, your employees will be fitter. I mean, if you have 10 employees and they are 10% fitter because maybe you help them with wherever. It could be motivation. It could be membership to the gym. Think about productivity. If 10 people will give you 10% more because they're a little bit fitter, faster, wherever, more focused, more energized. That's like getting another person for free. <laughs> you out of 10 people. I'm just saying it works. Awesome Takayo. Alex, I want to know your friend time. Answer. Uh, John Cox says, is that true? The Brian Sorensen will never get any respect with exception of the pizza <laughs> parlor guy. The thing is, uh, every why people are fat is different like some people and i've met them they it's how they were born they actually eat healthy they just like for uh i i have someone in my uh, circles right now he's doing everything above and beyond i eating super healthy he just can't lose weight it's but he's trying the effort is there so some of us just build differently but guess what when you build differently and you're trying your team will also see it and they'll give you props so I'm not calling out everybody who just doesn't look like me. I'm calling out everybody who doesn't look like me, who looks like three of me, but who lives the lifestyle and shows for it. Like, you know, if you wake up in the morning and you eat five donuts for breakfast, shame on you. You're the problem. But if you wake up in the morning and you're fasting and you're eating just meats and you're cutting carbs and you're trying, I mean, people will see it. That's not the problem. I'm not talking about fat as a problem. I'm talking about lifestyle and the message that you're sending. I'm talking about when you're too comfortable. That's what I'm talking about. Um, let's see. Audi is fine. Better. Run with it. 
Let's see, let's see, let's see. Randy says, I work with my crews every day. I think I even sent you a pic from my Fitbit the other day. I learned in the military that there is a big difference between a boss and a leader. Absolutely. And I think we're getting more and more bosses these days and less and less leaders. And it needs to change. You need to be in the trenches with your guys. So your team overall have to believe that you are with them, that you're not above them that they are important and they have the same opportunity as you do. And when we flexing too much, the perception, the marketing is pretty much opposite. So think about the message that you're sending, not only to the team, but to the world. I get it that you deserve your hustler, you work hard for it, I get it. But the message is actually distancing you. Like, it's almost like you're buff. It's almost like they cannot reach you. The message should be, hey, if I've done it, you could do it. That should be the message for everything, for your earning potential. And by the way, I don't believe that you should be making five or 10 times more than your employees per se. I mean, unless you're, you're running like, I don't know, $100 million company. But even if you do make 10 times more than that, I don't think you should show for it. Because that's a good way to lose employees. If you pay someone 50000 and you make... 500,000 and you make sure that you so, uh, show it on social media, you know, you're asking for trouble. I Because distance is so big and your attitude is so bad that sooner or later people are going to be like, you know what, I don't want to be in this environment. People want to feel like they're close to, people want to feel like they can reach your level if they work hard enough. And if you're showing that it's unreachable, like for example, if you're, you know, if you're in sales and you uh, keep flexing in front of installers that every time you, you have $5,000 a week, that installer will never make 5000 a week. But if you're a sales guy, if you tell them that you made 150 and installer made 100 different story. Just don't flex it uh, because those poor installers will have different um, opinion about your position and you're going to be on the wrong foot pretty much all the time. It's going to... This is offensive. Thank you. So hold on. Rakov says, this is offensive. Take it off. I'm not going to take it off. I'm going to speak my mind because this is real deal. And I don't know who needs to hear it. I, someone has to. Uh, I'm, before I talk about you guys, I talk about myself. This is my problem. I remember when I neglected my health, you know, the worst thing happened. Like I did not, I lost my motivation. I did not want to come to work. And by the way, in my darkest, darkest um, times, I was the least fat, uh, fit. I, I didn't go to the gym for like, I don't know, six months. It was always important to me, but I kind of neglected myself. When you neglect yourself, you will never be happy at work. And I promised myself this, no matter what happens in business, no matter what tomorrow has to be like, you know, every day we have agenda, every day, like you have to, Stop hard if you're an entrepreneur because the work always will be there. It never ends, but you have to do what's important to you. So what I did, I uh, I made a change. For those of you who don't know, I was suicidal at one point to the point I didn't want to live anymore. I didn't want to uh, go to work anymore. I, like I kind of lost it all. I, I, I worked so hard. My burnout was so bad that I stopped and I realized that no longer I am who I want to be. You know, I'm here just just because my family needs me, my employee needs me, my customers needs me, and I kind of stopped existing. And you know what changed? I said, no matter what will happen to my business, I don't care if I have negative balance in my account. I will never skip the gym. And I never did. For the last, it was almost five years ago. And I rejoined. I actually started going to CrossFit. I started going to two gyms, if you will. I Personal trainers, wherever. I made sure that my body, my mental health is always taken care of. So I'm talking about myself here because if you are not happy with your body, and by the way, we travel to businesses. This is also number one feedback. Number one of the first thing that business owners tells us: we arrive, we start, like first joke will be like, "Can you take 20 pounds off from that camera?" Right, and then we start taking pictures, and then people are like, "Oh shit, I didn't know I'm that fat." 
I'm talking about you guys. I'm talking about the feedback from the community because camera, they say adds 30 pounds. No, it doesn't. It's just, it's a mirror. So people start like, man, I did not know I looked that. So when you appear in the movie, and actually it was true for myself. When I watched my videos from three years ago, I hate it. Like I hated my belly. I have really big belly, small shoulders. I was doing this a lot. And I'm like, shit, I have to take it. If I want to do this YouTube channel, I have to take care of myself because I want to like myself. So, so many business owners, they actually, the first thing they say, like, man, I need to hit the gym again. So the problem is real. I'm not trying to shame someone. I'm not trying to say that I'm better than you. We're all the same. I'm 37 years old. After 30, the struggle is real. You know, your testosterone level is going down. Your body is not growing anymore. We all like to eat. Food is cheap. We travel a lot. Those habits, instant buy, sneakers, well, we all go through it. I'm not any better than any one of you. But as a leaders, we have responsibility and we have to make ourselves accountable. I have to prove to my team that I'm here for the long run. I want to be there for my kids, for my team, and I want to work the hardest. And by the way, when you take care of your body, everything else at work will be easier. I remember watching an interview with a billionaire and they say like, why do you exercise in the morning? And he said, for what I do, I need a strong body. I want to make sure my body carries me through the day. So true. Because I put so much pressure on this body. Sometimes we'll fly in at midnight, you know, those bags, everything. I mean, I'm exhausted sometimes. But working out only helps me. Randy says, a boss tells you what to do. A leader shows you and works with you. Absolutely. Gene Watt says, that's right, bro. Short timers. Good saying you're not healthy until you're healthy. By the way, healthy is new wealthy. James Street Fitch. I feel attacked. No, you're not. You're, you look good, Andy Ward. Um, linear roofing has a bunch of bodybuilders. And by the way, that's impressive. And, and maybe it's a little bit extreme. We're not talking about being, uh, you know, bodybuilders uh, and stuff. So Alex says, I, I tagged you, lol, my pull-up sucked. I did not see it. I have to go and find it. Can you send me a message, please? Um, this is a huge struggle of mine. You will be fine. You know, you know what to do. Mainly food. I can stand to lose 30 pounds. If anybody who's listening needs help, you know, I'll help you. We'll do burpees together. By the way, I'm flying tomorrow morning in like less than 11 hours, flying to Orlando, Florida, uh, FRCA. It's Florida Roofing uh, Contractor uh, Association Expo. Great expo. Gaylord Park. If you guys want to work out with me Friday morning at a resort, Join me for morning workout, jog, whatever. Everything where I travel, we're gonna work out together. So if you're in Florida tomorrow night or Friday night, Gaylor Park, I'm gonna be there. We're filming a whole bunch of videos. We're actually on the bags right now, coming back here and flying first thing in the morning. Uh, Gina says, mentally getting ready to get back to the gym. Gina, there is no mentally ready. You just go. You wake up and go. There is no mentally. Your brain will wake up after that. You you wake up and you come in. You are in charge. Send it in. Change to 5.30 uh, workouts recently. I love 5.30 workouts. It's the time I work out. It's the best. Taylor says, I can do more pull-ups and push-ups than you still. Taylor, you have no idea what I'm capable of right now. I will smash you in pull-ups, push-ups, squats, deadlifts, run. I will run faster, 100 meters, 200 meters, 400 meters, 500 meters, one mile, three miles. You bring. I don't care if you're Marine, if you're Navy, if you're CrossFitter, if you're a runner. You're going down, my friend. You have no chance against me. Prove me wrong. I will try intermittent fasting starting tomorrow. Good job. My recommendation for intermittent fasting is make sure you do eat within those eight hours. Don't limit yourself too much, but just don't. Pretty much you're skipping breakfast. What's going to happen is your testosterone level will double, and that's that's the game. Like uh, Rich Froning, CrossFit uh, Games champion, he switched 
like a year ago and he you know crossfit athlete they measure their blood all the time double like literally double you will feel, if your testosterone level goes up you will squat heavier you just like testosterone level is obviously good for muscle growth and stuff like that but that's what intermittent fasting will do it jake says legendary no my friend jake you are legendary i do a lot of burpees michael moran let's do burpees for time maybe at conference i can do like in 20 minutes i can do like 250 burpees can you beat that i want to see 955 alex Zuniga, you want to compete with me with 955 friend are you kidding me get it down to like i don't know six minutes if you're a leader you must lead the crew follows uh a man legendary don't want to become that war analogy makes a lot of sense yes sir i believe that 100 percent this guy kills me. <laughs> no Lambos. By the way, guys, uh, kill your bad habits. Uh, tomorrow we uh, drop in a video with Richard Turner. I recently visited him. So Richard Turner does not exercise. I respect him. I would actually go to war with Richard Turner, amazing guy. But recently he told, he had another problem. And listen, it's not just about being fat, but it's about being healthy. You can be skinny and you can be dead inside. Like I really mean it. Uh, Richard Turner, we've been drinking three, four, um, either Red Bulls or Monsters per day. He would have a horrible headaches because he has withdrawals. He would quit them, and it was killing him. He was sharing it with me, like just just that alone, just sugar drink. I mean, one Sprite has like 27 grams of sugar. Study what sugar does to you. I don't drink any pop, any soda stuff like that. I'll have Red Bull if I have to finish the drive. To another state or something or if i'm you know at 11 p.m driving home from the airplane jet lag whatever but overall i don't drink sugar sugar is absolute enemy and you can be skinny and killing your body with that as a matter of fact in my flooring days when i used to do floors i was about 20 pounds skinnier i would drink two get uh, two liters of coke before lunch that was major so calium calium uh, from coke it literally washes your bones like I was so skinny you look at me like no shoulders I was just I was a noodle man my kids call me uh, call me noodle man so you can be skinny and you can as a matter of fact a lot of construction workers they're not flexible they ha don't have mobility they don't have drive they cannot run a mile so just because you're skinny it does not make that uh, does not make you healthy it does not make you better than a fat person in that sense you both are um not healthy you're both horrible leaders you're both sending horrible message to your teams to your employees to your wife so take care of your body make sure you freaking function i mean study it you if you want to study a business study your body first um i hate roofing <laughs> in 2010 i'm i'm 210 and it's because of muscle growth makes me worried about going back to roofing if i decide you'll be fine you'll be totally fine the contractor book is the same let me see this russian right here in my opinion is the greatest thing to have the roofing thank you jake i feel like i don't want to do any, anything no more uh tired five leads that come in today i told homeowners i'm too busy i can take no work finding things i'm empty just saw 100k for a newer roofing company now the guy isn't paying me happens by the way you can reach out to us maybe we can help uh contract the booklist same one week uh on youtube has varied that uh videos on fasting it's kind of his thing well worth looking at it absolutely tommy delar is actually the guy i followed great youtuber if you want to learn about um intermittent fasting Tommy is your guy 100% agree one of the best uh, YouTube channels actually about losing weight men's health stuff like that very scientific uh, driven amazing amazing half of my cruise comes with me to gym on a daily basis now it's amazing feeling absolutely agree I have a problem with the speed of implementation about push-ups five max I can eat 30 Greek so I get no problem. Started CrossFit this year. Love it. CrossFit. Here's here's why I do CrossFit. CrossFit is the fastest way to get fit. 
it's um, it's programmed. I mean, I work out with the 50, 60 year old, you know, mothers of fives next to me. Like I've seen 70 year olds, you know, working out. It's amazing. What I like about it is you come in, you have to put your phone away. Every day is different workout. You have 15 pe uh, people around you. You have a coach and you cannot quit. That's it. What else can you ask? You know, they have usually two, three classes in the morning, two to three classes in the midday and afternoon classes. Everything is designed for you. You will hit all your muscles. You will get fit. Uh, we do gymnastics. We do power lifting. We do running, tons of cardio, whole body workouts. Always challenging, amazing atmosphere. I've never seen better culture in any gym than CrossFit. You will be finishing last in the exercise, in the workout, in the workout of the day, and you will have the rest of 14 people cheering for you. You will be competing against next five guys. You finish first, you go cheer for them. You finish last, they're going to cheer for you. Nobody quits. Everybody goes to the clock. Everybody, it's you against you. But it's in one hour, you're going to pack so much. Actually, I just brought three of my kids to CrossFit gym, 8, 10, and 12, killing it. My kids are sore. They love it. When you see 12-year-old kid learning how to squat, learning how to do kettlebells, jumping, and coming back for more, it's a weird addiction, but we are addicted to that pain because that pain makes you better. Well, if you used to that pain in business, you will use to that pain in the gym. And then the reason I work out first thing in the morning because it's hardest thing of the day. I promise you this, if you get get um, take care of the hardest thing of the day, first thing in the morning, everything else is going to be easier afternoon. Like, trust me, just like most of you, I, I hate it. I hate waking up early. Sometimes I'm sleepy. I get my coffee going. I drive through. But I never, ever regret it after. You know, your blood is going. You're ready to go. You, you you feel amazing in general and you're ready to kill. does not matter what that day brings. You already feel like you accomplished something. You already won in, in a sense. You And especially if you start a day with the heaviest lift, like, listen, um, if you do it for three years and you still PR, I'm 37 years old. I have about six personal records in the last three months. I want you to think about it. How do you think I feel about my upcoming day when I just – deadlifted more than ever when i just squatted more than ever when i just ran my fastest mile ever i feel like i'm unstoppable you know now i'm going to work by the way after that i come home i have a sauna at my house i sit in the sauna i script the video i'm gonna film my brain works i i work the best in the morning that's the best feeling you just worked out you're coming down your brain and pop fresh ideas you are ready for the day and by the way it's not even like i mean i don't finish my workout at 6 30. i show up at the, <laughs> at the office sometimes at eight and i see my sleeping employees coming in with a cup of coffee and i'm like let's go let's go let's go amazing feeling guys highly recommend all right we're finishing up 56 minutes perfect um, this Albanian roofers in Jer New Jersey talking fitness every morning, but when I collect the leads, money will so powerless. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, it's good too. Uh, I know working out will improve my life. Yes, it will. And by the way, I don't care if you work with your hands. Some people say, well, I work with my hands. I don't have to do it. Listen, if you have a strong back, you will not blow it. You know, my dad the hardest worker I know and I cannot tell you how many times his lower back was completely thrown out and he was in pain going to adjusting I used to have a chronic pain in my lower back when I was doing floors because you always bend your spine is messed up and now like I don't have the problem I don't go to chiropractors because I can deadlift almost 500 pounds when you have a strong back when you feel mobility and this is the beauty of CrossFit it's actually functional movements you know what is jerk well Try to take a bundle and pass it to the top. That's your jerk. That's your clean. What's the clean? It's picking up weights from the ground up. What is squat? It's controlling weight on your shoulder. When you have strong core, strong abs, it's functional movements. What's pull up? You know, I can do muscle up on the gutter. You know, with no ladder, I can climb the building. So it's 
it's movements that will help you on the roof on the ladder build that confidence maybe keep you safe every once in a while we also stretch a lot uh we just feel our bodies better watch our interview uh, on this topic by the way we have a sales guy from atlanta ali uh, from atlanta and he talks about it how you know he goes on inspections it's one of the best interviews with the sales rep i've done and insurance adjusters are not willing to go on the roof and this guy he's like a spider-man he said so many times they buy a roof because i'm confident i work out that day i'm ready to pump i feel good on steep roofs i feel good going in the alley you know like where nobody else wants to go and those adjusters they don't want to be on the ladder they're like okay young sport you go you know we're just gonna sign send you a check that's awesome feeling guys so we're re uh, reading two more comments and we call for the day that was absolutely amazing we're probably going to do another one of this late night shows next week monday or so um let's see what people are saying call my boss and tell him all the sales guys need to fit crossfit membership <laughs> well, well hook me up maybe we'll, we'll do we'll start tomorrow no next week no i know i should good for the mind hey bro i start fitness too because this guy from abc attacked me the other day really need a few all right guys you're amazing thank you so much for your support if you're planning to come to a roofing process conference tickets are on sale now please book with the rosen center hotel go to roofconference.com um you know we're vip tickets 95 percent sold out if you have a service like you want to be in expo area you have to apply we do say no to a lot of services because we're not gonna lab uh service that we don't believe in buy a booth from us we're about 70 percent sold on the floor uh, about 50 percent tickets sold and 95 percent of ultra vip tickets sold see you guys in december i'll see you next week and if you're in orlando let's meet up tomorrow gaylord resort i'll see you guys tomorrow all right